All right, we are live. Hangout number five on the PhysioTUS app is on the way. Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, whether you're watching from hopefully within the app or on the web app, or you're watching over on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, uh, thanks for joining this Hangout. Yeah, good evening, uh, everyone from my side as well. As always, um, if this is the first Hangout you're uh, joining it's basically yeah kind of what we had years back with the youtube live sessions where you can ask us anything anything you want anything uh oh fuck that was my water <laughs> anything uh business related uh but also any uh any private questions feel free i'll leave it to you and i'll go yeah <laughs> clean go clean up the mess, clean up the mess. <laughs> all right yeah so um I think we have a pretty good uh, hour ahead of us. Uh, we have great things to share, you know, as always. Um, what we do here with the Hangout is kind of quickly recap on what, uh, you know, has happened on the app, uh, what kind of uh, new events that we have, what kind of um, content that you may have missed if you are not already signed up on the app for free. Um, we want to give you a kind of an overview of what happened, but also I think today, which is going to be a big focus, is that uh, this week we will launch the first major update towards the app. We're going to go from uh, the 1.0.9 update towards the big 1.1 update of the app. So uh, that means we've added new functionality to the app um, that will hopefully make it a bit better and especially around these live events but uh, i think before we do that let's just uh you know, let kai uh, give you a quick uh, recap of what has happened in the last months yeah what we always do uh, with the hangout is we just look back at um, what we put out so if you want it's like a live uh, newsletter more or less um, so what has happened in the last four weeks uh, we had a couple of live events uh, first of all we had a, a Q&A with Lars Ave Marie from Denmark uh, about detoxifying clinical reasoning so quite a, a couple of people joined this event and they could ask all of the questions they had about clinical reasoning um, so that was on the uh, 30th of January, almost uh, yeah, almost four weeks ago now. And of course, we had our live journal club with uh, Alexis uh, Leveille, the no bullshit physio uh, that you might know from Instagram, uh, who runs our journal club in a nice and entertaining way. Uh, he discussed uh, a study on ankle sprains and the incidence of subsequent knee, hip and lumbar spine injury. Um, that was last week. If you miss those live events, no problem. As you know, you might be able to join the uh, event recordings. Uh, it will cost you, uh, I think, yeah, with the new credit system, three credits. You'll have 15 credits. Um, and of course, all of the live events, like this one, is, is free to join. Um, <clears throat> as always, if you have any questions, just post them in the chat and we'll get to them and answer them for you. Uh, what else have we uh, released? Of course, uh, the master classes are probably uh, the content piece that you that, uh, a lot of you are waiting for. And uh, this month in February, we released a master class on cervicogenic dizziness with uh, Julia Trelevin from Australia, who is like the expert uh, when it comes to cervicogenic dizziness. I think, uh, yeah, probably all of the papers that I read and uh, that I used to create videos on YouTube about uh, cervicogenic dizziness were from her, or let's say le at least half of it. So it was great to get her on. And um, of course, there were a couple of research reviews uh, because our last uh, hangout was, um, yeah, four weeks ago. So uh, there were five uh, research reviews, which are all very interesting, I think. Uh, and the uh, first one was how to predict readiness for return to play after lateral ankle sprain. So that's a question that you might get from patients from time to time. Um, then 
uh, another one was about rehab after anterior shoulder dislocation. I think that was the article from Andrew Jaggi, who has also created a masterclass on the uh, unstable shoulder with us in January. Now we released, I think that was the first episode or the first masterclass we released in December. Mm, yeah, that was the first one. <coughs> but she's not mentioned in the references for that article. Oh, okay, then, then it's, it's probably a different, a, a different, oh, okay, it's a different uh, author. Okay. The artisan trial. All right. Uh, then uh, another research paper uh, or research review we published was uh, it was basically two similar ones, so three and four. So one was exercise progression to incrementally load the Achilles tendon and a similar study for the patellofemoral joint. So really interesting if you have a patient and you don't know where to start or you don't know how to progress or regress exercises, uh, that those articles or those research reviews might be really interesting for you to have an idea how to progress or regress your exercises. And if some exercises are too irritable for your patient, how to maybe uh, load the joint a little bit less. Um, yeah, and the fifth one was running adaptions for patellofemoral pain. So, um, yeah, what can you do uh, when your patient who is a runner is in pain and has uh, patellofemoral pain um okay uh yeah. and two more things yeah we the, the latest podcast episode uh, we always release a podcast episode beginning of the month uh, this time it was um we, uh, about the temporomandibular uh, dysfunction with uh, professor corinne fischer so, quick correction at this point. Uh, I think I announced her as a as an assistant professor, which she's not. She's a professor, and I think I, uh, I said in the introduction that she's published 30 papers. I think it was more than 100. So, uh, yeah, a little correction from my side. Yeah, then we need to... Uh, on this point. We need to edit the uh, guest description on the app as well. Yeah. It's still the same as your introduction. Oh, yeah. Okay, and last but not least... Uh, the blog article that we published, those were actually two in the last uh, month or in the last couple of weeks. One is about flare-ups in osteoarthritis, and the second one is about cervicogenic dizziness, so it perfectly fits the Masterclass episode. Yeah, I got my all-rounder badge. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to just... <laughs> yeah, I got the all-rounder badge. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the app yet, we try to implement a lot of different badges, uh, similar to what you might know from Duolingo, which is, of course, a bit of an idol or uh, a, a great example, which we enjoy as an entertaining app. So we try to kind of, yeah, have our own badges for the learning content that you can enjoy on our app. Okay, upcoming events. Yes, okay, let's... Uh, drum roll, please, because um, upcoming events. Uh, I think that's a good segue to introduce the the new, first new feature of uh, the upcoming updates. Because the events will have a more prominent place and are better organized, so you can also look ahead on what kind of events are coming. So let me just go to the uh, split screen view here. Um, as you can see. Um, also, uh, the first improvement is you can now see which event is currently live. So if you launch the app, you will see that Hangout number five is currently live and on the way. So you can directly join from the banner because before it used to disappear. So now uh, it stays while uh, the event is live. Um, going down to the event section, um, you will see that there is a new banner on upcoming events. And if you click on that, you will see per month uh, each event that will take place on the date and the time. And the real kicker here is that, let's say, for example, um, there, the upcoming Q&A session with uh, Julia Trelevin on cervicogenic dizziness, if you can click that little calendar icon, and add this event to your calendar and then also be reminded through your favorite calendar app about the event and get redirected to the app. So in that regard, Hangout number five now is live. So upcoming on 13th of March, 
9 a.m. Central Eastern Time because we need to uh, cope with the time difference between Europe and Australia. Uh, we have the Q&A with Julia Trelevin, so check that out and submit your questions um, around cervicogenic dizziness if you can't join live, but you're also welcome to join us live in the morning and ask your questions to Julia. Um, the, then the week after, 21st of March, we have another journal club with Alexis also there um, for you. Vote for your article of choice. Again, you have two articles to choose from uh, that will then be discussed in the journal club. And end of March, again, is then time where you can join us on the 27th for yet another Hangout. Yeah, next to that, we also have some content coming up next month. Um, we just talked about the Q&A from uh, Lars about detoxifying your clinical reasoning. There's also going to be a masterclass about it. Um, so that's the next masterclass that's going to be released in March. And uh, the new podcast episode, which will be released, is I think maybe, yeah, one of my pe personal favorite ones, I'd say one of my personal top three. Uh, and that was about dry needling with Barbara Cani. Really interesting. We talked about the physiological effects after dry needling, the evidence. Um, so really interesting episode. Uh, also, if you're, uh, yeah, if you're a critic, uh, as I am a little bit. So, uh, yeah, check it out. And yeah, we'll also... No, that's, a, that's an old entry. We don't have a blog schedule yet. <clears throat> don't have a blog schedule. Probably going to write a blog about uh, dry needling. So uh, if you don't like listening uh, to a podcast, then you might prefer reading. Okay. Um, we always also talk about what's happening at PhysioTutor. So you have an idea about what we're doing, what we're working at. Also, yeah, just uh, a little bit uh, of, of a day in life uh, maybe. So you, you have a, a yeah. You can see behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I'll keep talking eh, until you uh, interrupt me. <coughs> hey, Rob, shout out uh, to you from here. Um, yeah, we talked about accreditation in the Netherlands. We're in the process of re-accrediting all of our online courses. Um, so if you are a Dutch physio who is worried about getting all the points in until the, the end of the accreditation year, don't worry, all of our courses will be re-accredited. Um, we can't say that 100% sure because it depends on the accreditation commission, but I mean, the courses have been accredited before, so uh, that should be fine. Um, so if you still need points, then uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's a great chance to collect the points through our online courses. And a warning at the same time, um, for the first time in PhysioTutor's online courses history, we decided together with our, all of our speakers to increase our prices to adapt it to the inflation. So from 1st of April, the prices will increase 10%. So if you are interesting or you're thinking about getting a course, make sure you get a course now. You do have lifetime access. So if you buy it now, um, doesn't change much. It's only two courses that are that give you one year access, which is the big three from Emma King. And also the running rehab course is two year access. So if you're interesting and you're thinking about getting an online course, get it before 1st of April when the prices increase. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you talk as well. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so what else is there? Um, yeah, we were, I think in the last Hangout, we actually announced it. Uh, that was shortly after the last hangout, we uh, gave a lecture at our old university uh, for a group of students. Uh, it was a more intimate lecture, um, but it was good uh, to be back. I mean, once you uh, roam the, the hallways of your old school, also, uh, you know, still smells the same. So uh, it was good to, to be back. Um, and in a week's, in two weeks' time, we will be back in Hasselt in Belgium for the second time uh, to give a talk 
uh, but it's not going to be a very clinical talk. It's going to be more about the business side of physio tutors um, and more so a a a Q and A. So we're really looking forward to that because last time was was a good a good time in in Belgium. Always felt uh, very welcome there. Looking forward to the Belgian beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this afternoon, uh, we were guests on a German uh, physio business podcast, um, quickly, you know, talking about, you know, what does physio tutors offer? Um, I think the audience there was mainly clinic owners. Um, it was good to uh, just share our experiences and also to uh, provide some insights and, in, you know, what physio tutors can offer to, to clinic owners and their continuing education needs. Um, yeah, we're going to hustles. Yeah, um, this or oh, last week, Friday, last Friday, we recorded a podcast oh, yeah. on MTSS, medial tibial stress syndrome with uh, Tom Goom, the running physio. It's a really interesting episode. I think also a condition that a lot of uh, therapists struggle with because we don't have too much evidence uh, until now. So uh, it was good to... Uh, get in some clinical expertise from Tom, uh, who's also pretty famous on the social media channels. And I've been trying to get him on the podcast for quite a while. So it was a great episode as well. Um, yeah, and, and, and another live event, which is a more closed thing for our old school. We're going to do a meet and greet at, the, uh, at a graduation party in May. So again, looking forward to, to go back to the old grounds. Uh, this time it's for the English uh, trajectory of of the studies and not the not the dutch one um yeah you already talked about changes yeah. of the app i think uh, we talked about it a lot of times we're really happy with the app but that's just the first step so uh, it's really a passion project and we're trying to yeah turn it into the greatest uh, product and project the physio world has ever seen um, and um, so we'll keep on developing it. Um, all of the revenue that comes in goes into the development and, and more. So, uh, yeah, you already mentioned the live events that, that um, or the, yeah, the events that, that has improved. What, what else uh, has changed? Um, so, yeah, while the, while the events uh, have changed uh, mostly, um, what else? I'll just quickly go into uh, a research review. Uh, to give you like a uh, a small improvement that you might not notice otherwise um, so in our research reviews you will see uh, tables and uh, a lot of you had have reached out to us that you know they would like to see be able to zoom into it so now you can tap on any image that you see across the app and you can uh, pinch to zoom so if there are tables that of course on a small screen are difficult to read you can zoom in and out and um, it always snaps to the center as well so it's uh, a nicer way to consume uh, big table screenshots from mostly the research reviews so that was a, a first small change but i think will improve uh, usability and readability of the research reviews um, second of all yeah i've already discussed the events improvements and there we come to the i think biggest add-on um, of the app uh, you know that we used to have the add-on section where you could have access to our legacy manual therapy and assessment content as well as our uh, clinical assistant AI. Uh, but we have rebranded this section <clears throat> to become tools. And if you take a look at the menu bar at the bottom, there's also a dedicated tools button functioning as a shortcut to the tools section. So let's just click on that. And then you will see here below the first one is the clinical patterns which is an entire entirely uh, new app uh, a new tool within our physio tutors app yeah maybe to to add to that like we felt like the name add-on was just too small for what it is because it's basically a huge part of the app so we said why why call it add-on and not call it tools and give it a menu point or menu uh, item in the menu 
um, because it is a huge part of the app. Plus, yes. yeah, you can, yeah, but we'll come to that. You can also access it as a basic member now. And again, because I see quite a, a lot of people on YouTube, we have to repeat it and repeat it. The app is free. <laughs> if I don't know, but the, 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 we, the app will be insanely good and is already good and it's free. You don't have to pay a single cent if you want to get extra features here and there and have unlimited access to all of the content, then yes, you can become a premium member for around 10 euros, more or less, depending on your country, which is also a really good deal compared to everything else that is on the market compared to all of the competitors. But the app is free. So if you're not using the app, then if you're physio that is more or less motivated, it, it, you need to get it. Yes, and every physio <coughs> should have the app. Tell your friends, it's, it's free. So there's no reason if you're any interested in physio not to have the app. Like, that's yeah. our that's our mission at least. Yes. Like uh, we want to reach every physio in the last corner of the world and yes. uh, make the app so insanely good that there's something in the app for for, for everyone. everyone. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, let's take a closer <sighs> look uh, at the clinical patterns. I'd say so. Um, like if you navigate to tools or on your discover feed to the tools section, you will see a new tab for clinical patterns. Um, what is the name of the app, please? It's called Physio Tutors app. So if we go to the clinical patterns, you will see a, a standard uh, layout. Um, for example, uh, let's say we want to see lumbar joint, lumbar and SI, and then you will see in this case uh, three uh, three pathologies. Uh, let's take, for example, uh, lumbar radicular syndrome. What you'll then have is you see at the top you'll see uh, different chapters. So this first one, the clinical pattern, gives you a brief overview of a couple bullet points highlighting the most important information from epidemiology, clinical presentation, examination, and treatment for that specific pathology. You can then swipe between chapters to get more elaborate information on the epidemiology of a certain condition, and you can swipe through the next one towards assessments. You can watch videos, by clicking on the thumbnails, you can click on uh, items to come to a, uh, oh, I'm, I'm on the test version, but it's going to redirect you to um, a add-on item for assessments. Tool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a tool item from the assessment yeah. tool. And you can swipe between these tabs. And if you swipe back, it jumps back to the point where you left off. and. Like so, you have a, a, uh, a lot of uh, different clinical patterns. We are also continuously adding new pathologies in that same format. Yeah. Let's just till pick. The, till the end of the week, it's going to be around 50 different patterns. And I think one of the things that we had on our website uh, were different conditions, like, the, like, like in the clinical pattern app uh, that, that, that is more or less identical. Um, but in the past, you could log on to our website and then uh, watch the full versions of the conditions. Uh, and now with the app, we moved that into the app and people were missing that on the website. So this was our way to say like, okay, uh, if you love the different conditions that we highlight, highlight on, on our website, we're going to put this into an even better format on our free app. Um, so uh, yeah. If you've missed the conditions, then there they are. And also with a clinical pattern tab at the beginning. So you have a great overview. If someone walks into your clinic with a pathology that you're not familiar with, you can have a quick glance and then check out like, okay, what is it? Uh, what should I do? What kind of tests could I use to examine a condition? Yeah. So yeah, you will <coughs> find this in the new tools tab or on your discover feed on the app next to the manual therapy assessment and clinical assistant tool um, last but not least yeah there were some smaller bug fixes but um, 
One is that we have prepared the app to accommodate three additional languages. So as you know, right now the app is 100% available in English, French, German, Spanish, and Dutch. And we are close to be adding Italian, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Turkish to the app. Um, they have been added to the website already. So our website, physiotutors.com, can be watched in, or in red in Italian, Portuguese, and Turkish. And also our online course website is being translated so it is translated but only the uh, video subtitles still need to be added so if you're uh, an italian physio who just bought a course and you're wondering where the italian subtitles are let us know which course you booked and we'll uh, add them as soon as possible so that's going to be yeah a matter of the coming days and weeks yes you forgot one thing and i think you have to log out and log in with uh a basic user yes i think so uh we do have a new credit system like uh the way we try to make the app accessible to free users is our credit system so we said we don't really want to limit uh, access to content for a free user because this is what you often see and it's kind of a pity uh, we rather want to limit the, the app for premium users or for basic users on on a functional level so what we came up with was a credit system and every month you get now like in the past it was five credits and every premium content item was one credit and the tool section was completely locked. So what we decided now because we want to give <coughs> basic users the chance to also check out the tool section if you want to use one of the tools it's going to cost uh, one, one credit, credit and this part of the whatever you choose like uh, an assessment a manual therapy technique a clinical pattern uh, will be unlocked for 48 hours right 24 24, 24 hours. hours yeah till the end of the day so uh, as you can see um i have 10 credits left on my account um used to be 15 and if you click on the credits uh, icon it's give, it's going to give you an explanation of first of all how many credits each content type uh, will cost you if you are on a free membership and yeah as you can see the credits are used to watch lectures read research reviews access event recordings and tools and you receive five to fifteen <coughs> credits and as you can see we are uh, on it's the 28th of uh, february and the credits will renew in one day but i cannot of course also upgrade to premium yeah the reason for that was basically because we said okay different premium content items are worth a different amount of credits like a master class of i don't know an hour plus is just worth more than um yeah maybe uh, re-watching uh, our hangout for example so that's why we try to have more of a hierarchy and and like we said already we wanted to give everyone access to check out the tool section to experience how useful those tools can be in clinical practice yeah and if you un uh, if you unlock a research review or if you unlock a lecture that will be available to you until your credits reset. So only the add-ons, for example, our our AI assistant or an assessment will will uh, relock after twenty four hours. Yeah. So now you, even as a free member, you have access to even more uh, content within the app. So you can check it out. Albeit you are limited in the amount of content that you can uh, consume but yeah that's the upside of being a premium member um, to have unlimited access to uh, content yeah all right yeah no no question so far so we'll we'll just ramble on i just told andreas like there's gonna be the i'm waiting for the standard question about the workout routine <laughs> <laughs> yeah that hasn't come up yet um yeah, like uh, I said it last time, I'm, and I'm curious in general, like, are you guys reading any interesting books? So it's totally off topic. I love to read. So um, do you guys have any recommendations on great books that you read uh, that you can recommend or great? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you sent me two great TED Talks lately. So um, any recommendations uh, in that regard? Uh, I have to share I have a new hobby 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go. I finally ended up um yeah, like oh I have to 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 get back to the to how the story started. Like we once had a a, a housemate who had a, a, a barista, a, an espresso machine, and he basically made the best coffee ever. And since then I've always been yeah, I've always wanted to go for a barista for uh, for yeah an espresso machine, but I knew that my girlfriend she wanted to have an automatic machine, so I never knew what to do, and we still had the filter coffee machine. So now I finally ended up buying an espresso machine, and it's like a hobby that you have to take on. So now uh, I'm totally into coffee, and the book that I'm reading now, so that's my uh, segue, is um, from uh, James Hoffman who is like the guru on YouTube uh, of coffee. So I'm reading the Atlas of coffee. So you're learning. Nice. Yeah. So you're learning everything about how coffee is grown, where it is grown in which countries. Um, yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, like a uh, wine. Like I had some obsessions uh, with wine, did a couple of courses. You learn a lot about growing wine and wh where it grows and, 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 and the effect. So now I'm all about coffee trying to, get the best out of my coffee beans at home. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I have to say a uh, shout out to our uh, student. Uh, yeah. Worker. Yeah. To yeah. our student worker, Steve Burke here, who uh, brought his own coffee grinder here and who, who put me back on track to buy my, <laughs> buy my first espresso machine. Nice. Um, <clears throat> awesome. Okay. There was a, yeah. What type of books do you read? Yeah. Oh, did you already answer? No, no. Oh no. man, all uh, everything like um, it can it can really be anything. Like I said, now it's about coffee. Then uh, I do read a lot of stuff about uh, athletic performance. I, I like uh, stuff about that. Like I read a book about um, genes and the influence uh, of genes on uh, sports performance, which was really interesting. Uh, I do read a lot of stuff about habits. Like last in the last hangout, I told people that I basically read the biggest two books on habits, which is uh, Atomic Habits from James Clear. And um, I always forget the other name. Um, uh, James Duhigg. Habit Mechanic. Yeah, the, the, I was going to get to that oh. from James Duhigg or something uh, about habits. And uh, the one that I'm reading now as well next to the coffee bo book is The Habit Mechanic oh. um, from uh, Dr. Uh, Finn. So that's also an interesting one. So because I do believe that we are we're the result of our habits, and um, yeah, so why not try our best to get rid of yeah bad habits and 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 do our best to take on or to to make new habits. So uh, and there's another <coughs> another question as well. So Jerome, if you have any great books, um, yeah, let me know. And um, you recommended two great TED talks. Yeah, and a podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, we're uh, back on the du Duolingo uh, train. Um, the uh, what's his name? Louis von Arn. He's the CEO and co-founder of Duolingo. Um, it's uh, yeah, very charismatic guy, funny guy, uh, talks great. So I'm currently listening to his two-hour podcast with Tim Ferriss, and uh, he has a nice, nice. Nice TED talk as well about how uh, how they built and why they built Duolingo. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a question from uh, or from Rob. So um, uh, if you're not on YouTube, it's uh, uh, Rob just did his third year OSCE. I think that's in the US. US. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the stations went well. Any tips on ways to unwind to stop thinking about it? Whilst I wait for the results, get an espresso <laughs> maker. <and> read a <laughs> book about <clears throat> coffee. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I can imagine that there's a lot of tension, but yeah, a good book is from Eckhart Tolle. Uh, that's really esoteric, maybe too, too esoteric for a lot of people. But from uh, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, which is all about. Uh, why we do experience pain if we live too much in the past and in the future. Future is worrying past as, as past moments that we cannot change anymore. So that's a great book. It's kind of yeah, meditative, I'd say. And uh, yeah, and from a, I think, rationalist point of view, I'd say 
you've done your best, you prepared as good as you can. And every exam is a feedback moment. Um, we failed exams. So, um, yeah, it always sucks. But um, at the end of the day, it's just feedback. And um, yeah. Oh, it's if, in the UK. It's oh, UK, yeah. Our yeah. CE in the UK. Yeah. But they have that in the US as well. Yeah, it's just called differently, probably. Oh, yeah. Okay, now the book recommendations are coming in. Uh, Ansu says that Telltale Brain by V.S. Ramachandran. I've heard about that one. Oh, no, I'll jot it down. Telltale Brain. And The Seven Habits yeah. of Highly Effective People. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a classic. I do have to say I did start it twice and I always stopped. I don't know why. Everyone who has read the book says it's a great book. Um, yeah, I've had it. I, I do have it on my Kindle, actually. To tell brain. Yeah, you're welcome, Rob. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what else? What are you reading? You're not reading. Andreas is not a, not a great I'm, reader. I'm not a great reader. No, I'm currently not reading. Yeah, what I said, I'm, I, was watching, uh, I was watching the TED Talks there. Um, Currently, I don't know. I, I I got stuck in the in Harvard Business School's YouTube channel, so I was watching quite a bit of. They post a lot of lectures there. They have like this, yeah, startup uh, entrepreneur uh, class, um, and they have some some nice guests like uh, VC people who come and give talks. And uh, yeah, I like to watch that. I'm not a big reader. No, I I did buy a Kindle because last year. I, I, I made an effort to read more, and I did read more, but yeah, that that habit uh, didn't stick. So I might have to to pick that up again. Yeah, yeah, it's it's my way to fall asleep. Actually, I always pick up a book, no I matter how late it is, and <laughs> and I read. And sometimes it's an hour or more. Sometimes it's five minutes, and I fall asleep. But I put away my book, and I'm falling asleep like not even one minute afterwards. So. Yeah, I don't have a problem with with <coughs> with sleep. So. Uh, I'm like I I hit the the bed. I have a very good uh, neuro tag for once I hit the sheets that I just fall asleep. It's uh, it's very good. Okay, question in the uh, in the app in from the app chat. Probably Dutch Job. So I'm playing tennis with a guy called Job. Uh, hey guys, did you do a masters? And if so, what did you do and why? Uh, we did the manual therapy masters. Um, at the Somt in Amersfoort. Which was absolutely great. Uh, and yeah, then uh, people might say manual therapy, which is under fire, but it was really so much about clinical reasoning, not so much for the techniques. I mean, you learn like 150 mobilization manipulation techniques of which in the end you maybe use 10. Uh, but it's all about, it was all about musculoskeletal clinical reasoning, basically, which was absolutely great. In the Netherlands, there's, uh, around 8% of the people who go from a bachelor's to do a master's. Um, I don't know the percentage of people who do a scientific master's and a, and a skills master. So this is this was a skills master part-time for three years. And the level of physios who continued and who did the master's there were just really high. People were really motivated. So um, I, I'd say the level of clinical reasoning and the level of discussions that we had was really great and i think it helped us a lot to yeah put out good content uh content wise physio wise for youtube and for for our online courses like if you <clears throat> if you want to have our masters in a nutshell i'd say go and check out our orthopedic physiotherapy of the spine course where i really tried to summarize three years of of our masters into one uh product yeah yeah, there's a question on, on YouTube, but it's a clinical question. To tell me about the possible causes of shoulder impingement. Uh, the Hangout is, is not the place for uh, clinical questions, but we're going to plug our latest add on the clinical patterns so you can find a rotator cuff related shoulder pain pattern there. And then if you go to the epidemiology, you will find. Uh, pathophysiological mechanisms as well for this condition so yeah i'd also say check out our video about shoulder impingement as well. which is a which is a yeah a myth busting video uh, you'll enjoy that 
And uh, yeah, Job, congrats on starting at the SOMT. I'm not sure if you're doing the manual therapy or the uh, sports masters or, or the, the echo or pelvic floor. They have, or geriatric. Yeah, geriatric. They have, I do have a lot of different ones. My girlfriend, yeah, which... my girlfriend did the sports masters at the SOMT. She was really happy. Teachers are great. Uh, exams suck <laughs> um, but for the rest it's it's a really great school and uh, say hi to every uh, everyone there <clears throat> yeah it's a good choice you'll you, you will uh, love it and if you're interested in practicing the techniques which can be hard then the manual therapy tool is basically a summary of all of the techniques we had to learn during our masters so uh I don't even know if I could carry out uh, all of them anymore. Probably uh, I would have to look it up myself. But all of the techniques that we learned during the masters are in our app. Yeah, you'll 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 like the app. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Vanessa says, "What's the name of the school?" Yeah, we had we went to two schools. One was the European School of Physiotherapy at the uh, Hogeschool uh, of Amsterdam, so the University of Amsterdam, um, which was our uh, bachelor's four years. That was in English back then. Um, so they have a Dutch and, a, and, a, and an English um, cohort. Yeah, That was the word I, I was looking for. And then we did a master's of manual therapy, uh, so an MSc degree in manual therapy at the SOMT um, how they called university, university of, of physiotherapy university yeah. of physiotherapy in Amersfoort, which is a yeah a, a little bit of a smaller city in the netherlands yeah <clears throat> okay okay um yeah we always have a section about things that in the physio world that caught our attention and yeah um I'm always on the lookout for good and interesting uh, research articles um, that are also uh, screenshot and then I for forward it to Ellen and, uh, and I ask Ellen, hey, let's write a review um, about uh, uh, this article. And I saw two articles that I just want to briefly want to discuss. Uh, there was ongoing debate about uh, muscle stiffness in people with low back pain and I think it's a bit triggered. Uh, also because we in the past told people to really stiffen their back and their, their abs um, because of the whole insta lumbar instability theory. Uh, then a couple of years down the road, I think also with the work of Peter O'Sullivan uh, and Tasha Stanton, she also did a paper on uh, muscle stiffness in people with low back pain. Now there is a review and a meta-analysis from Vatovec, Vatovec, uh, probably uh, somewhere in the, in the Balkan region in 2024, and they analyzed uh, uh, patients and their stiffness and compared it to um, healthy people without low back pain. And they also found that people with low back pain have stiffer backs. So they also suggest that trying to remove or reduce the stiffness is a valid strategy for treatment. And I think this is also what uh, we see uh, in practice it's so many more people do have low back pain because they have a really stiff back or because they move like robots and not because they are unstable and they need more uh, core stability or whatsoever. So it's really much more about exploring ways to move freely and to let go of the stiffness that they have in their body. Um, so that was one article that was uh, really interesting and then another one that Adam Dobson shared on uh, on Twitter or slash X and that was uh, about uh, open and kinetic and closed kinetic chain exercises after anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. Also the uh, good old debate uh, are open uh, kinetic chain exercises dangerous and what they did was uh, that was uh, an RCT. And they measured, uh, they had two outcome measures. One was uh, muscle strength uh, of the quads and the other one was intrinsic graft uh, laxity. So that was the theory or what people are afraid of, that if you do open kinetic chain exercises too early and too vigorously, um, then the graft may come loose and you yeah, might destroy the, the reconstruction. What they found was, so that the, the group with the open kinetic chain exercises, they did 
full range of motion exercises after two weeks. Usually it's forbidden up to, I think, four or even six weeks or eight weeks. So that a full uh, range of motion exercise without resistance. And then later on, after four weeks, they did exercises with resistance in the open kinetic chain uh, compared to a, a closed kinetic chain cohort. And at the end, they checked for laxity and there was no difference. So the message uh, from those researchers, and I think it sounds like it was an Italian group, was from Forelli et al. 2024, or Forelli, um, was that, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're laughing your ass off, <laughs> Forelli. Yeah, so that's my Italian interpretation, sorry for that. Um, yeah, they, they did find that uh, they or they did suggest, okay, go for the open kinetic chain exercises. Um, they don't increase uh, laxity. So far, so good with the research articles. Um, awesome. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'd already checked current books. Um, there's also one question. Any thoughts related to Pakistani physiotherapists? Yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I'm, I'm going to let you talk in a minute. But... The app, I know we are saying the app, the app is so great, <laughs> download it. But one goal that we have, or our mission in general, is to elevate the standards of physiotherapy worldwide. And we know that with the online courses, they were uh, or are a very uh, expensive product for people in, in lower income countries. So in Pakistan, it might be way too expensive. We understand that. This is for one, why we put out so much free content and why this will always be free. And at the same time, the app is free in the basic version. And if you want to become a premium member in Pakistan, I think the app is 80 cents a month, 80 euro cents a month. So we try to, um, yeah, basically have Spotify as an example of how much different stuff costs in the world, how much they charge for a Spotify premium uh, subscription. And in Pakistan, I know it's the cheapest country that we have listed. It's 80 cents uh, a month for a premium subscription. So yes, our advice for Pakistani physios would be check out the app. Um, I think uh, in Pakistan, as far as I'm informed, uh, the level of en English is great. So uh, I, I think you're going to find tons of value there. Yes. Could okay. we do a podcast session on the Feldenkrais technique? Oh. I'll fill up my water. I'll leave you to yeah. that question. Yeah, I mean, you do the, the podcast uh, interviews. I mean, we can uh, jot it down on the... Uh, if you have a specific uh, guest uh, that you think is, is well-versed on, on that technique, you know, we, can, uh, we might check it out. But uh, I think we did, we, we did have a... A lecture about yes, it for like an the hour ESP, or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you know our content, I think we are pretty skeptical about um, how can I put it uh, about alternative methods. So uh, I think my first reaction is always like, mm, mm. "Where's the evidence?" Uh, I think dry needling was like the, the 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 latest version where we felt like, "Nah, is it something? Is it nothing?" But there's quite some evidence emerging with Fallon. Christ, I'm still skeptical, but it's. I think it's interesting for. It can definitely be an interesting episode for the audience. Um, so yeah, if you have if you have someone specific that uh, that could be a good guest, let us know. You know, send us an email or uh, or reach out on social media, and uh, we will try to approach uh, approach the guest. Um, yeah, I don't see any uh, other guests, and also I think looking at the time um, we can come to our last and segment that always changes we try to come up with a with a interesting um, a question to ask each other and i went ahead and asked my good friend chat gpt uh, to give me a couple of question to ask kai about his first and last so how that's gonna go is there's um it's about experiences of different <laughs> sorts. And uh, Kai can tell me about the first time of that experience and the last time. 
and then maybe also draw some comparisons between the two. So I have to say, when I heard it, I was I have like two things in my mind that you were going to ask me. <laughs> yeah, but that's not pro probably it was the, the, the second was drug related. <laughs> what was the yeah? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's let's keep it light. Let's talk about content creation. So, what was the first piece of content you created for Physio Tutors, and what was the motivation behind it? And then also, what's the latest piece of content you've worked on? And how do you feel your motivation or approach has changed since the beginning? So first and last piece of content. How many questions of those do you have? Because I, I can talk a lot. Huh? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll cut you off. Okay. So, uh, no, there's the, six, but I'll, yeah. I'll pick and choose. I'd say the first one was the video on uh, planes and axes, uh, anatomy, planes yeah. and axes on YouTube. Yeah. Because I can remember that that was pretty difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. And I was crazy about anatomy um, at school. Always tried to um, impress our teacher, Bert Lawson, great guy. Um, so uh, that was a complicated concept. And I, I tried to make a video about it. And it's, it's still going strong and really popular on, on YouTube. And the last content piece, not so much in terms of videos, but um, yeah, basically last couple of days, I added the clinical patterns that we have on the app. Um, and uh, what was the follow-up question? Yeah, how do you feel your motivation or approach has changed since the beginning? Yeah, I have to say with the videos, we uh, at one point we just suffered a video burnout because we we created so many videos that at one point you're like, oh, yeah, you j just don't want to do another video. More than a thousand. Yeah, I, I feel like we're still in that phase because we could make so much more videos, but at the moment it's still, um, I'm lacking mo motivation. Um, and yeah, of course, it was in the, in the beginning, it was just fun and no business idea or whatever behind it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the last content piece with the clinical patterns, um, I don't know. I was pretty motivated to get them in because I think it's a great tool. We've been talking about it for ages, like a clinic. Before we had the idea with the new Physio Tutors app, we, we, we wanted to add or we actually had an app called Clinical Pattern App in the App Store. Um, which, yeah, it was almost ready was, to launch. Which yeah. was never released, but uh, I think it was on our radar for years. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to get this in. And um, because I do feel like this is what a lot of people want to have and know, like, uh, yeah, a good overview of content at their fingertips, which is also what a, a lot of people are, yeah, don't don't have and they're panicking in, in, in the first internship and so on. Um, okay. I'm, I'm just looking at questions as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll just answer the, the questions quickly uh, to interrupt you if you're okay with it. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Good countries for masters. Hard to say. I'd say the great countries for physio are when it comes to research, probably, I mean, Netherlands, Belgium for sure, uh, but surely Australia, New Zealand as well, the US, of course, Canada, uh, Scandinavia, uh, including Denmark as well. I think those are like the, the the bigger countries for I guess the UK as well. UK for sure. Sorry if, if I forget forgot that, but mm. um, probably those countries where the where the biggest chunk of research is coming from. Those are are the interesting countries, I guess. Uh, we need courses and podcasts with renal PTs. Yeah, um, we try to get a lot of content renal. out of the muscul musculoskeletal mm -hmm. field. Really hard to get, so maybe in the future. Uh, so I'm talking about a question with meant with intervertebral this. Well, what is meant by intervertebral this? I'd say we have check out our blog on seven facts every healthcare professional should know about intervertebral disc herniations. Yeah, just do a quick Google search for uh, physio tutors, yeah. disc herniations. <coughs> if you give me one second. There you go. Okay. All right, Kai. Next question. Um, we kind of talked about a bit, a little bit of about some milestones. I think the first the first video is a milestone, uh, and now also with the app. But reflecting on your career with physio tutors, what was your first significant professional achievement that made you feel like you were on the right path? And then also, what is the most recent achievement you're proud of, and how does it compare to your feelings about your first major success? 
long questions. No, I think the first major success before the launch of the ebook was probably reaching a thousand, a thousand uh, followers on YouTube. Let's say that, that felt like a, an achievement. And that was a long question. What else? What? what how that, did it make me feel? Was yeah, it? yeah. How that? Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> so th that made you feel like you were on the right path. Yeah, so I like, think I think back in the days, uh, even. At the point where we finished the bachelors, I mean, that was a big bit further down the road. We had like 5,000, 6,000 subscribers. But I think like from 1,000 on, uh, we took it way more seriously. And I felt like, let's go for it. You know, I, I felt like we were onto something. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I felt. So I kind of knew that I wanted to see like what's in the Physio Tutors project, if we can turn it into a company. Yeah. And the latest. The most recent achievement. And how does com how does the feeling compare? Wow. Mm, what was my latest achievement for physio tutors? A real achievement. Mm, yeah, I could say uh, finishing the clinical patterns, but that's not really achievement. An achievement. Um, yeah, I'd say the app launch probably. Mm -hmm. I mean. The, but it, it's different, right? Like the feeling is the feeling is diff the feeling uh, is different. Yeah, mm, it's hard to describe. Like uh, I think, like the feeling in the beginning is more like uh, that of a. It still feels like a, a dream that you're working towards, mm -hmm. um, and you're getting closer, and you hope like you can make this into your living. So it was also insane motivation, but it, I think in a beginning of course it was more like a, a hobby that i really enjoyed and now now i think with the app the feeling was more the real feeling of an entrepreneur who has like great ideas i mean we talk about the app a lot and it's a passion project and like yeah to, to have a, i think that's the greatest part of being an entrepreneur is to like create something something in your mind you have an idea under the shower or during your workouts or when you talk and then you you really try to make it as great as possible and to change stuff and then as soon as it's you have something in an app store and you can use it yeah so that's more of a like a, a feeling of yeah accomplishment that you brought something from idea to fruition mm -hmm. okay yeah, good, good, good answer. I guess. Uh, let's go. Uh, you kind of talked about it already. I didn't uh, think that you would uh, already uh, go so deep into your uh, latest uh, hobby. But what was the first hobby or interest that you developed outside of work, and how did it influence your life or work at the time? And what's the latest hobby or interest that you've picked up? How does it reflect your current <coughs> life or work balance? Our first hobby ever was soccer. Yeah, and uh, I mean, how did it influence my life? Um, yeah, massively. I feel like with through sports in general, but also through soccer, because I tried to kind of become a professional or semi-professional player, or ended up being a a good amateur player or semi-professional player, however you want to call it. You get a couple of euros for it. Yeah, it taught me so much, and now I'm also thinking about my son, who is like eight months months old now i'm thinking like yeah the guy has to to do some sports because you learn how to function in a team how to get along with teammates how to deal with critique um how to celebrate victories but also deal with losses and and and, and uh, yeah also trying to put other guys into the back into their place in the dressing room and uh, uh banter and um yeah, I think it massive, massively shaped me as a person. So I feel like sports and also team sports, um, yeah, people should definitely do it just just for their personal growth. So I think uh, I've grown a lot as a as a person. Yeah, the latest hobby. Okay, if we go away from sports, because I could also talk tennis for ages now, which which is my other sports hobby now. Coffee. Yeah, how has what's the question? What, how has that influenced me as a person? No, the, the question: What's the latest hobby, and how does it reflect your current <coughs> life or work balance? You're tired, and you need caffeine. <laughs> mm, how does it reflect my work? Your current work. 
or yeah, your current I'd life? Say, I'd say with, with everything I do, also with coffee, my girlfriend is always joking about it. Like I'm, I'm someone who, if I start a hobby or if, if I'm interesting, interested in stuff, whatever it is, I, I dig deep. Like I go down a rabbit hole. I want to know everything about it. I read books. I watch videos. Um, and uh, yeah, at home, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of meditation to just brew a, a great a cup of coffee. And uh, I think it's the same with wine. I like, uh, I like to experience stuff, uh, not just have a cup of coffee or drink a bottle of wine or, or a glass of wine. I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I want to know, like, where is it produced? Why do you get certain flavors? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I get out of it. Okay. All right, cool. And one more question. It's about travel experiences related to work. So reflecting on what was your first work-related trip and what impact did it have on you or the company? And then also... Uh, what was the last trip you took for physio tutors and how do your feelings or outcomes from this trip compare to the first and that's physio tutors related i guess yeah. yes yeah, yeah yeah work related physio tutors trip yeah probably our first trip was the us right west coast yeah i was thinking i mean we did some did we do lectures <coughs> no we did at that time we didn't do uh, no i feel i feel like travel lectures. is really like yeah. going to a foreign country yeah when we when we released the book and uh yeah, the feedback was great, and we we earned a couple of cents from from the book. We said, okay, uh, <laughs> there was the San Diego Pain Summit 2018, I think, um, and we we yeah 2018, right? Yeah, yeah 2018. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, uh, yeah, reached out or to to Rajam Rose, who is the organizer of the of the event, and um, yeah, she invited us to the event, so. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, that was the same weekend when we had probably the most important day of our uh, manual therapy, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, masters. So um, yeah, but we said, or remember, I said, okay, if if we can either go on a trip or we can go and do our masters and our exam that weekend, but if we talk about it five years later, w which which choice will be more exciting or will be give us great experience so we said fuck it we'll we'll go on a trip and uh we we spent three weeks on the west coast in the u.s uh i've never been to the west coast you neither you've only no. been to the east coast yeah. so it was an awesome trip spent like a week in san diego i think it's just also a great way to celebrate and also a great way for the two of us to hang out to kind of celebrate what we've achieved so far yeah, up to that point and, yeah, exactly. and, and uh, plus it was just really cool uh yeah, cool trip. And the last trip <coughs> that we did for physio tutors, I don't know, it's probably Belgium, I guess. That could, yeah. I mean, we, we haven't done any overseas or no, no. flight trips. Yeah, people in... reach out, but then, uh, yeah, he, uh, have, you tr have you guys considered traveling to other countries, hold your training seminars? Yeah, quick side tour. Um, yeah, mm, people reach out to us at, say, universities great we'd be happy to give a lecture um but i don't think we consider ourselves clinical experts um there are other people with more experience or researchers uh, who are real experts for topics so i think we we don't see ourselves as that but uh to give a lecture in front of a student audience or master's audience awesome so uh, that was also the last trip we did i think a year ago to belgium which was awesome yeah um it was only not so such a good idea to uh, have a lot of Belgian beers before the lecture, so that was pretty hard to get my get my shit together and deliver a good uh, speech. But uh, that was a uh, was a great trip, uh, I think, uh, just to to have fun and um, yeah, to to have a have a good time as well. And uh, it's always great to meet students and uh, people who know us from social media or wherever. It's just fun. Yeah. Uh, the Belgians were pretty, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty shy in the beginning. But then later on, uh, in, at <laughs> yeah. the party, they were like uh, going wild. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, they needed also some beers to uh, to relax. Yeah, no, good time. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I think the other ones were kind of already intertwined in the in the questions. Um, yeah, I just see there's 
one question was on the app chat, um, also from a Pakistani physio, asking us if we can give unlimited access uh, because the app is too expensive. Once again, you don't need premium to enjoy the app. You can enjoy a wealth of content pieces of all kinds uh, with your credits each month. They're reset every month. Um, yes, unlimited access and some other premium features like your library is a premium feature. And also there, we have made the app affordable all over the world. We have adjusted pricing to reflect purchasing power in countries from east to west um, because we also want to make a premium membership affordable for people no matter their uh, their uh, economic background. Um, but again, the app is fully functional in the free membership. So you don't need it. If you don't have the money, then you can still use the app with all of its functionality and content with our credit system. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Two more questions. I think a question from Switzerland from Der Dude. What do you think about PT master programs in Switzerland? I think also pretty good. Uh, I did an internship in Switzerland. So did you? I think the level was pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, I think the system is better than in, in, in Germany currently. And um, yeah, like the, the guy who was my clinical instructor uh, was a great physio and uh, so I, I had a good time and I think they also do have a, a good master's program there. I, I know a couple of people that went to, I think, Zurich. And yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the my German CI. Said as, oh, what's the name? Also where Hanulu Mayoki is a lecturer. Yeah. And I think Kerstin Lütke that will have on a podcast about migraine. She's also a lecturer there. So I think they do have a good program, so uh, for sure. And then uh, uh, another one from Keen. Uh, he said, I meant seminars for training for licensed physio, for example, a seminar in physiotherapy for sports-related conditions. Yeah, a bit, bit, a bit of repetition what I just said. I think we, we are more, we have pretty broad general or decent knowledge, but I don't think we'd be... No, we're not the right people to teach a class on a specific pathology, um, on, on, on a specific clinical topic. Um, we would much rather advise to check out whether the instructors that we've produced online courses with, yeah. if they give courses, because they teach all over the uh, world, if they teach um, in your in your country. So we'd rather advise you to check out, you know, study.physiotutors.com, check out the courses there <coughs> and the instructors, and then check whether they teach in your country, because we can really vouch for their expertise. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Greetings back to South Africa, to Angelo. Been there twice. Awesome country. Great, great dialect. Um, yeah. Uh, still questions coming in. Is there any info on physiotherapy, cardiorespiratory, like the podcast? Yes, we have one podcast episode that was produced yeah, around the COVID you, time. You meant, like the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have one podcast episode on uh, cardio physio um for i think it was with pat camp yeah it could yeah could be it in a... there respiratory physiotherapy and covid um 19 with pat camp so that was a uh, a podcast pat camp uh, you can check it out episode 29 you can find it on physiojudos.com on every podcast platform or on our app okay um i'm looking at the time um i don't see any new questions coming in but we do this every single month so in four weeks time we will be back in those seats for another hangout um so with that being said the dog is also getting restless. Um, <laughs> um, we're going to sign off for now. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks a lot for this, for this session, Kai. Thank you for your uh, insights into your first and last experience of all sorts. Um, and yeah, again, thanks a lot for tuning in. Download the app. It's free. Uh, we'll, we'd love to uh, see you on the app chat next time. Now, there were a lot of guys uh, on YouTube so uh, next time, join us on the app and uh, yeah, we'll sign off. Okay, yeah.
keep your questions for next time and uh, take care. all the best. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye. Bye.